the Lord. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hey, listen, guys, I'm Pastor Kevin Wright. We want to welcome you to, amen, Facebook Live. Amen. Praise the Lord. As you notice, I'm doing it in a different room today. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm doing it where Sister Leslie, where well, the First Lady does hers on Friday. Amen. I just heard her yell out, you're a copycat. Okay, whatever. Amen. Okay, okay. <laughs> Amen. First of all, we want to do a little shout out to Ryan and Ramonica. And Ramonica told me, quit calling her Ramonica, but call her Mona. And they are our newest pastors who are there in Arkansas. Amen. Yes. Uh, praise God. They're taking over in ministry there. Amen. Praise God. And uh, we were there Sunday to install them. Yeah. Let me tell you, he had a packed out Ooh. church. I mean, it was packed yeah, out. Time. The program was wonderful. We had a wonderful installation. Yeah. And we also ordained them as well as pastors, both Ryan and Mona. So we want to do a shout out to both of them again, say congratulations. And yeah. it was a long week for them because they had a lot of different things going on. Right. And I know that they got a little rest yesterday. Amen. Praise God. But uh, uh, back to, you know, uh, pastoring a church. Amen. I had a real good word for them. I had words of wisdom, yes. a word from the Holy Ghost. And uh, they said that it really helped them. And Amen. The people enjoyed the service. We had wonderful special music. And I mean, the whole program was nice. Amen. Had words of expression. Had a lot of guest pastors there, other bishops, the whole nine yards. Man, we just had a great time. Also, we want to thank the members who came out. I didn't know they were coming. They drove all the way to Arkansas. Amen. Just to support their pastor. Isn't that something? And yeah, you know what? I think they found out by way of Facebook. Mm -hmm. I think my wife put that on Facebook, you know, the different places that we go to to minister, etc. Yes. Also, we got another, uh, actually, I got a pastor's anniversary to do. Yes. Amen. Yes. Praise God. And, uh, you can look on Facebook. Amen. Praise God. June 12th. On June the 12th. Amen. Praise yes. God. So uh, at what time, honey? Is that four, four at 4 o'clock? And that's with yes. Pastor... Daryl, I mean, Pastor Eric Cooley. Pastor, Pastor Eric, Eric Cooley, Cooley and his wife. I hadn't seen them in a long time. Pastor Amen. Eric. Eric, if you watching, excuse me. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> My mind is running right now. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. But uh, Pastor Cooley, I hadn't seen him. He goes way back when we first started our ministry here in Mississippi. Yeah. Him and his dear wife. In fact, I had lunch with him a couple of days ago, and we had a good time of fellowship. Uh, so we'll, we'll be with Pastor Cooley in a couple of weeks as well. Amen. Helping him out with his pastor's anniversary. We're just going to believe God for a word spoken in due season that's going to help not just Eric and his wife, but also that congregation. Amen. Amen. So we're on the move. We are a church on the move, and we're just excited about what God is doing in these last days. Amen. Yes, yes. Praise God. I don't care how dark it gets. The darker it gets, the brighter the light. That's the right. darker the night, the brighter the light. That's right. And that's what we're supposed to do. Folks say, well, what are we supposed to do in these last days? It seems like all hell breaking loose. Well, we're supposed to up our game. That's it right there. Darker the night, the brighter the light. Yes, and we are the light of the world. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. So we don't need to go run and close the door, run to the house, close the door. No, we don't need to do that. We need to step our game up and be bold. Yes, sir. Be bold and take hold mm -hmm. to the promises of God. Yes. Going forth to teach and preach God's word, laying hands on the sick, casting out devils. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Setting the captives free, preaching deliverance to those who are in prison. Amen. Yes, sir. Praise God. So that's what we're supposed to be doing in these last days. So I got a word for you. Amen. Praise God. I've been seeking the Lord. Lord, what do you want me to give the folk? You know, I'm kind of sitting back this week. I'm just relaxing because we're having our new church dedication yeah. coming up starting this Saturday at 11 o'clock a.m. with Pastor Henry Ely and Connie yeah. coming from Kissimmee, Florida. And man, we're going to have a good time. Bring the sick and shut in. Just come ready to receive from the Lord. Come ready to receive from the Lord. Yes. Amen. And get your breakthrough. Again, that's this Saturday at 11 o'clock a.m. at New Beginnings. Amen. That's going to kick off our church dedication week. 
Then on Sunday, we got Pastor Keith Echo and Renee yeah. coming from, amen, the Delaware Valley there. Amen. Praise God. And I know he's going to have a word from the Holy Ghost. And he's going to dedicate our facility. Amen. Praise God. And we got some more things that's going to be happening. There's going to be a lot of excitement and fun. Place going to be packed out. So we got pastors coming, ministers. We got people coming from different states to whole nine yards to be a part of this monumental occasion. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. As we prepare ourselves. Amen. To go forth to reach out to the lost and dying world with a glorious gospel. Amen. So you don't want to for, forget this Saturday at 11 o'clock. And then Sunday, we got in-person church service, just like I mentioned. That is this coming Sunday at 11 o'clock a.m. Amen. Well, let's pray. Let's get right into God's word. Heavenly Father, once again, we do kind of the honor and the privilege to get into your word. Father, we thank you that your word shall go forth, shall not return void. But it shall accomplish what it will set forth to do. That is to first of all feed our spirit man. Then to renew our minds and heal our physical bodies. And Lord we just thank you for a word spoken in due season. How sweet it is. And Lord we thank you for the great teacher among us. The Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit lead us and guide us into all truth. I thank you Lord I'll not miss to the left nor to the right. But I'll follow your perfect will. So, Father, we just thank you that we come in it with you in advance to give you all of the glory, honor, and praise for what shall be revealed through your holy written word or through gifts of the Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks. Turn with me to 1 John 1, 9. Amen. Praise oh, God. Oh. Hallelujah. Yeah. 1 John 1, 9. Amen. Praise the Lord. I tell you, God is good all the time. Glory to God, to me, and to you. Uh, this afternoon, or this evening, we're going to talk about, it's never too late to start over. <laughs> That's a word for somebody right there. Some of you right there, you shout right there. Oh, Pastor, I done missed the mark. I done done this. I done done that. I didn't do everything the Lord told me to do, Pastor. Oh, my goodness. I wish I could get another chance, Pastor. Will I be able to fly as high as I used to, Pastor? Oh, Pastor, Lord Jesus, I don't want to throw in the towel. Pastor, I need some help. Well, this message is for you. Yeah. Amen. It's never too late. Say that with me. It's never too late to start over. All to start right. over. All That's right. it. It's never too late. Yeah. Never too late. Well, let's begin here. Let me lay a little bit of a foundation. Let's go to 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. A very familiar passage of scripture. Amen. Praise God. Well, let's back up there, verse 8. Yeah, let's back up to verse 8. If we say that we have no sin, or if we say we ain't never missed it, for we have deceived ourselves, and the truth is not in you. Wow. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. And the truth is not in you. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Wow. Man. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us from all of our unrighteousness. Then turn with me to Psalms 32. That's right. If we go to the Lord, he's faithful. And he's just to forgive us. To forgive us from all of our sin. Yeah. I don't care what the sin was. God said, I am here to forgive you. He said, I forgive you. I forget about it and I forgive you. Now that's a word from the Lord. Some of you need to take that right now. You need to forgive yourself. A lot of us, you know, we know that God has forgiven us. But the question is, have you forgiven yourself? That's it right there. Say lie. Let's think about that a moment. Right there, right Most there. of us know what the scripture says, mm -hmm. that God is just and able to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Don't make a difference what we've done. No sin is too great. The Bible says that he has forgiven us. But then the next question, and we'll deal with this a little bit later, have you forgiven yourself? That's you know, it's hard to move forward when you haven't forgiven right yourself. There. It's hard to move forward yeah. when you don't know that God has forgiven you. Mm -hmm. Now, that's one thing. 
you got to know that God loves you and that he forgives you. But then two, you got to take it a step further. And we'll talk more about that in just a minute. You got to learn to forgive yourself. If if you're going to move forward, mm -hmm. if you're going to continue to, to, to do great exploits in life and do wonderful things for God, mm -hmm. you're going to have to understand that God loves you, that he forgives you, and you're going to have to forgive yourself. That's it, right? Amen. How about Psalms 32? Psalms 32 and verse 5. I acknowledge my sin unto thee. I acknowledge my sin unto thee. And my sin have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Come on, and that's the psalmist David. Yes. He said, I acknowledge. I acknowledge my sin unto thee. And my iniquity... Have I not hid? I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou hast forgave me of that iniquity of my sin. That's right. Well, I stop by today to let you know you can begin again. You can begin again. It's never too late to start over. It's never too late to start over. We serve the God of a second chance. God is not angry with us. God's not angry. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 <laughs> Corinthians chapter 5. I believe we got some kind of uh, bug or something in here. Oh, I did. Isn't that amazing? So, I don't know what that is. What the world? I don't know what this is. It's moving around. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> I guess he wanted to get some word too. Oh, oh my Jesus. goodness. <laughs> 2 Corinthians oh, chapter no. 5 <laughs> and verse 19. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I tell you what, God is not angry with us. I say God is not angry with us. Amen. So some of us think God is just mad at us, that he's angry with us. Amen. God's not angry with you. You need to stop being angry at yourself and learn how to receive God's forgiveness. Amen. God is not, and that's what that scripture said. It said that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them. No, there. Not imputing their trespasses unto them. Amen. Amen. Praise God. No, there. He's not angry with you. I got another word for you. God forgiveness. God's forgiveness, plan B, can be just as good as plan A. That's right. Plan B can be just as good as plan A. There is no setback that you cannot overcome if you dare to believe God. There is no setback that you can overcome if you dare to believe God. Amen. So, do you dare to believe God? Do you dare to believe God? There is no setback. No setback. There is no setback that you cannot overcome if you dare to believe God. That's it. That's it. Hallelujah. How many of y'all believe that? Yeah. There is no setback that you can't overcome if you dare to believe God. But you're going to have to believe God. Amen. It's going to have to take faith. Just like it took faith for you to receive salvation. It took faith for you to receive the Holy Spirit. It took faith for you to receive Amen. You're healing. Well, it's going to require that same kind of faith for you to receive your forgiveness. You got to receive your forgiveness. So once again, God's forgiveness plan, let's call it plan B. It can be just as good as God's plan A, if you allow it. Amen. Once again, there is no setback that you can't overcome if you dare to believe God. Let me give you another word. 
Quitting is not an option. Quitting is not an option. Quitting should not even be in your vocabulary. I said quitting should not even be in your vocabulary. Nobody quits. No, you shouldn't quit. Take that out of your vocabulary. You got to keep going. You got to keep going. Amen. Praise God. I don't care what the situation looks like. You must keep moving forward in the name of Jesus. And then there's some of you because you've missed the mark. You've done some things maybe that don't line up with the word of God. You feel like, I don't believe I'm, I can dream again. Let me tell you something. You get yourself ready. You're going to start dreaming again. You're going to start believing again. You can drink. You can have God's blessing for your life. Amen. You're going to dream again. Why? We serve the God of a second chance. I said we serve the God of a second chance. Then there might be some of you say, Pastor, because I missed the mark, I will never be able to fly as high. I'll never be able to fly as high. Well, I got a word for you. You're going to fly even higher. Why? Because you're going to receive God's forgiveness. I declare this day you will receive God's forgiveness and then you'll learn how to forgive yourself. And as a result, you'll be able to fly even higher. Amen. There's something else you're going to have to learn how to do. You're going to have to learn how to get beyond the guilt and shame of missing the mark. That's something that holds Christians back. That, that's what holds people back. Why? They're still holding on to the guilt and to the shame. See, they, they, there's something about guilt and shame, it, it'll turn you into a coward. That's right. Your guilt and shame will turn you into a coward. You're going to have to get beyond your guilt and shame. How am I going to do it, Pastor? You're going to have to believe God. You're going to have to do it by faith. You're going to have to take God's word. You're going to have to take God at his word. Let me say it again. You're going to have to take God at his word. God said it. That settles it, and it's over with. God said he forgave you. You received that forgiveness. God said, I'm not angry with you. Hey, God's not angry with you. So why are you angry with yourself? Why are you angry with yourself when God's not angry with you? You got to learn how to get beyond that guilt and that shame. Don't buy into the lie that things will never be the same again. Well, because I did this or I did that, things ain't going to never be this. Listen. Things can be even better. Things can get better. But you must believe that you'll be able to fly even higher. And that things are going to get better. That's right. Things will never be the same. They're going to be better. God will finish what he started. I said God will finish what he started. Turn with me to Jeremiah 29. Amen. Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. God, he'll give you a fresh start. God will get you starting all over again. That's okay. But see, this second time around, you'll be a lot stronger. You'll be a lot wiser. You'll be a lot smarter. You'll do everything different. That's right. God's plan B can be even better than God's plan A. That's right. If you allow it. If you take God at his word. I said, if you take God at his word, glory to God, hallelujah, take God at his word. Let God be God in your life. Jeremiah 29 and verse 11, he said, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. That's right. God said, I know my thoughts about you, and that is to give you an expected end. To give you an expected end. That's You know what that means? To give you a bright future. To give you a bright future. God's plans for you is to give you a bright future. An expected end. Amen. But you're going to have to take God at his word. Uh, you got to put God's word into practice. God said he has forgiven you. And he wants to give you a bright, fresh, brand new start. Listen. You can start again. Why? Because he's the God of a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth chance. But it's going to be up to you. You're going to have to use your faith. 
That's right. You're going to have to use your faith. You're going to have to use your faith in the name of Jesus. Yeah, you're going to have to use your faith. The same faith that you use, praise God, to receive your salvation. The same faith that you use, glory to God, to receive the Holy Spirit, to receive your healing. It's going to be that same faith. You got to learn how to receive your forgiveness. Yeah. God said he forgave you, so accept that and move on. Until you accept God's word as is, as final authority in your life, your life will never be the same. That's it right there. Huh? You got to learn how to accept God's word. And until you accept God's word, you'll continue to go backwards. You're either moving forward or you're moving backwards. You're going to have to accept God's word. Yeah. God said, I'm not angry with you. He said, I'm going to give you a fresh start. He said, new beginnings in Revelation. The Bible says that he's the God of new beginnings. That's you're going to have to I receive that. that. I said, you're going to have to receive that in the name of Jesus. Like I love Jeremiah. God said, hey, I know my thoughts about you. And that is give you a brand new start. Wow. Fresh new beginnings in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. In fact, turn with me to Psalms 103. Psalms 103. You must believe that you receive your forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Let's dwell on that for a moment. You must believe that you receive your forgiveness. You can't be moved by how you feel or what it looks like. You must take God at his word. You know, oftentimes, you know, when you miss the mark, don't you feel jacked up? Excuse my vocabulary right here. You feel bad, don't you? You feel messed up. That's a good sign. Trust me. Good it's sign. good that you don't feel good. Mm -hmm. That's your conscience convicting you. Yeah. You know, you get that little velvety feeling, as Brother Hagin used to say. You feel a little oozy on the inside, like, oh, man, I shouldn't have did that. Oh, Lord. You feel in that spiritual remorse. That's important. That's the Spirit of God dealing with you. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. And that's very important. That's very important, glory to God, to have that feeling. Now, when you no longer have that feeling, you can do wrong and don't have that feeling. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We got problems, Houston. There's a problem showing off. There's a problem, Houston. Mm -hmm. We got problems. Yes, sir. Psalms 103. And beginning there, uh, let's take a look at verse 12. Ah, uh, no, let's just back all the way up to verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not all his benefits. Now notice what, how many of y'all like benefits? I said, how many of y'all like benefits? All right. I mean, how many of you got jobs? And you know, I don't care if they paying you 20 bucks an hour, but what about them benefits? Now, oftentimes, them benefits go beyond your pay. Uh, not, benefits are very important. Health insurance and all that. Pension and all. Hey, listen here. He said, bless the Lord, oh my right, soul, right. for getting out all his benefits. Mm -hmm. Notice what the very first one is. Notice what the very first benefit. Who forgiveth yes, thee all of all thine iniquity. Yes, sir. Woo, we can shout right there, Woo. couldn't we? Yes, Man, we can run around the room right there. Mm -hmm. That's the very first benefit of being a born-again believer. Of being a blood-bought Christian. What is it? forgiveness. Say with me right now, I receive, I receive my, forgiveness. my forgiveness. Therefore, Therefore I'm going to move forward and press toward the mark of the high calling in Christ. In Christ. Yeah. yeah. You got to learn to move forward. I said you got to learn how to move forward. Glory yeah. to God. Then you drop down there to verse 12. Drop down there to verse 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far have he done what? Removed our sins from us. Uh, wow. He has removed our sins from us. As far as the east is from the west. That's a long way. That's a long way. Let's find a neighbor right now. That, that's a long way. That's a long distance, man. Yes, <laughs> has he done what? Removed your sins. As far as the east is from the west. You know what that means? That's from the East Coast to the West Coast. 
from New York to California. <laughs> Amen. He has removed your sin. I don't know how many thousands of miles that that is. I guarantee you it's thousands and thousands of miles. 3,000, 4,000, I don't know. It's thousands of miles, right? Well, he has removed your sin from you as far as the east is from the west, from New York to California. Well, you want to believe that. You know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You'll never go beyond the will of God known. And see, you need to know these things. Why? So that you can receive God's forgiveness. You need to know these things. Why? Mm -hmm. So that you can forgive yourself. If God has forgiven you, then you ought to forgive yourself. Let me say that again. If God has forgiven you, then you ought to forgive yourself. Amen. Amen. Find a neighbor and tell them. If God has forgiven you, God has forgiven you. You need to forgive yourself. You need to forgive yourself. Turn with me to Micah. Jonah, Micah, Nahum. That's a book we don't read much, do we? But just jot the scripture down. Don't get fancy. Just jot it down. Micah chapter 7 and verse 19. He will turn again. He will have compassion. Oh, I like that. Come on, the man. Lord. Talking about God's mercy. Mm -hmm. huh? Mm -hmm. Micah praising God's mercy. Notice what Micah said. He said, he will turn again. Woo! Man, that's a message right there. I hadn't just planned on. I didn't really zero in on that. He will turn again. Meaning he'll turn it around. <laughs> he'll turn it around. You know that song we sing? Yeah. He'll turn it around. He will turn again. He will have compassion on us. He will subdue our iniquities. Thou will cast all our sins where? Into the sea of forgiveness or into the depths of the sea. Mm -hmm. Woo! Man, that's something to shout about right yes. there. Let me read that again. He'll turn again. Come on. I mean, God will change his mind about you. God, his mercy. Come on. His mercy is new every morning fresh brand new hot smelling bread every morning fresh mercy every morning he'll turn again he'll change his mind in your favor he'll change he'll turn into your favor why he's a god of mercy he's a forgiving god he will turn again he will have compassion on you Yes. He will subdue your iniquity. Come on, now. And he'll cast your sins into the sea of forgiveness. That's good, sir. Ooh, man, we got to get right that there. down in our spirit. <laughs> right. And when you get that down in your yes. spirit, it'll take you to a whole nother level. Ooh. That when you miss the mark, that you know God is just and able to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. You'll learn how to receive your forgiveness. Then you'll learn how to forgive yourself. Mm -hmm. People who got problems with uh, forgiving themselves, they lack the word of God, word content in that area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They don't understand the mercy of God. They don't understand. Look, his mercy endures forever from generation to generation. You need to get a revelation on the mercy of God. You need to get a revelation on the compassion of God. Yeah. You need to get into your word. You'll never never go beyond the will of God known. Yeah. You need to get a revelation on that. Mm -hmm. That way you'll receive God's forgiveness. Well, you need to get a revelation on that. Therefore, you'll forgive yourself. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. How about Isaiah chapter 1? Isaiah chapter 1. Amen. I got my wife looking at me. Woo. I can't even remember my scriptures. My wife looking at me. Woo. She, what she doing in here? She messing with me, y'all. Tell her to leave me alone. Tell Pastor Leslie to leave me alone, y'all. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Girl, I'm trying to teach the word of God. Come on now. Verse 18. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, as red, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Wow. How many more scriptures do I need to give you? God has forgiven you. Amen. He's throwing your sins into the sea of forgiveness. Though all your sins may be red as scarlet, 
He comes in and washes you white as snow. Come on now. We got to be so careful when we walk in unforgiveness. Walking in unforgiveness is not a good thing. When you walking in unforgiveness, uh, when you don't believe God has forgiven you, mm -hmm. when you don't know how to forgive yourself, when you're walking in that, listen, it weakens you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It weakens you. It'll cause you to act cowardly. Why, the Lord ain't going to forgive me. I don't know what I'm going to do. I might as well throw in the towel. There ain't no sense in me going to church no more. Ain't no, I just, I, 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 I just quit. I just quit in life. Oh, boy, let me end it all. There's no need for me. Listen here. I just gave you all the scriptures that God loves you, that his thoughts toward you, not not just when you doing everything right, his thoughts toward you, Come on, now. just in general. This is how God thinks about you. Yeah. He loves you. He's compassionate toward you. He's faithful and just to forgive you. Now you get on up. Come on, now. A righteous man may fall seven times, but he gets back up. Yes. Why? Because he understands that God loves him and that God forgives him. Yes. And he knows how to forgive himself. And that's a word for you. You got to understand God loves you and he forgives you. And you're going to have to learn how to forgive yourself if you're going to get up and move forward. Because yes. every one of us have missed it from the pulpit to the parking lot. Ain't nobody perfect. Now we're striving for perfection. Oh, yes. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. I have to throw that in there because, you know, you don't just keep waddling in sin. Christians don't practice sin. Mm -hmm. They fall into sin. But they have an advocate. They yeah. have a lawyer there ready to plead their case. You know, the Bible said that Christ, he forever lives to make intercession for us. He said for you. Yes. You know you're going to win. You got him as your advocate as your lawyer. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Come on now. He's your spiritual Johnny Cochran. You ain't going to lose. Come on, Amen. Come on lose. Praise no. God. God is in your corner. But when you walk in, in this type of spirit, where you don't believe God is forgiving you, unforgiveness, it'll weaken you. It'll cause you to act cowardly. It breeds, it breeds timidity. You'll be timid about everything. You won't walk forward. You won't walk with your head up and your chest out. You walk around with your head down, your eyes to the ground. Why? Because, see, what you walking in has caused you to become cowardly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It also caused you to be hesitant about things in life. Why? Because you waiting on that great day. Oh, judgment is coming. You watch out. Brother Hagin used to say, watch out for these preachers that keep preaching judgment all the time. He used to say it all the time. He used to say it all the time. Yeah, yeah. Watch out for these preachers of judgment. Watch them. Just watch them. They get off. You know, we tell you something. God, God don't, he's not trying to put you in the lake of fire. God's not trying to judge you and destroy you. On, he said, I know my thoughts about you. He said, I know what I'm thinking. Don't put words in my mouth. I know what I'm thinking about you. I got thoughts to give you an expected end, wow. a bright future, in spite of your mistakes, yeah. in spite of your shortcomings. I got a, a bright future for you. And that's a word for each and every one of you that's listening and watching now. God has a bright future for you mm -hmm. in spite of your past. Yes. But you got to get beyond that guilt and shame. Yes, yes. Yeah, because when you walk in the guilt and shame, it'll weaken you. It'll cause you to act cowardly. It breeds timidity. You'll become hesitant, unsure, and you'll get over into being faint-hearted. Come on now. Just Come falling on now. by the wayside. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But we got to get beyond that guilt and shame. Yes. Over there in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, jot that scripture down. In fact, let me go there. 2 Timothy. How's our time? Okay, making good time. 2 Timothy oh, chapter 1. All right. And verse 7. It says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and a sound mind. God has not given us a spirit of fear. One translation says a spirit of timidity. 
just timid about everything. Oftentimes, you can, you know, if you're a people person and you you are learned in the scripture, mm -hmm. you sit and talk to people. They drop their head, drop their eyes down. They're they're hesitant. They're timid. Uh, their steps are not sure. There's something going on on the inside of them. There's something going on on the inside of, them. and it will affect your personality, your character. It'll affect your body, all of that. You got to receive God's forgiveness, and you got to learn how to forgive yourself. The Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear, of being a coward, of being timid. No, you know what the Lord said. He said, "Come boldly." In Hebrews, come boldly. Come on now, let's go there. Hebrews chapter four, I believe it is. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly, not timidly. Mm -hmm. It's talking about when you miss the mark or when you need, you know, more anointing or you want more glory, whatever, anything you need from the Lord. He said, come boldly unto the throne room of grace yes. that you may obtain what? Mercy. mercy. Notice that it starts out with mercy. Mercy is for folk who didn't miss it. <laughs> Folk who've been going through some tough time. He said, you got to come to the throne room of God how? to obtain mercy. Come boldly. Yeah. Come with authority. Walk in there. Yeah. And, and when you walk into the throne room of God with boldness, you know what that's saying? That I know that my Lord yeah. has forgiven me. And I have forgiven myself. You can't come boldly if you don't know God is forgiving you. You can't come boldly when you haven't forgiven yourself. He said, come boldly. When I used to go to my mom and dad's house, I'm not going into the refrigerator timidly. I just bust up in there. I bust up in there. That's my mama's house. That's right. Going on inside the refrigerator. Mama got leftovers, all this. Oh, I just get what I need. Now, how would that feel if I went to my mom and dad and said, Mom, daddy, can you spare me? Some food, Daddy. Ah, ah. Mother, can I get a glass? No, I don't want a glass. I'll just take a cup because the glass is too much. Can I get a cup of Wawa water? Somebody look and say, Have you lost your mind? My mom would look at me and say, boy, right. you've been in Mississippi too long. What's wrong with you? <laughs> you my, now my dad would say, is you crazy? Is you nuts? Why do you think the Heavenly Father? Yeah. Me? Now, I'm not saying the Heavenly Father saying you nuts. I ain't trying to say that. I'm just saying, it's just got to be embarrassed and just blown away. That you will come, you born again believer, you will come to the throne room of God, timid, full of fear. Oh God, <laughs> can you give me a little bit of mercy? That just sounds terrible. You know where that comes from? A lack of knowledge. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. See, just because you're crying don't mean you serious. Right. Because you got them big crocodile tears, don't tears, crocodile tears, that don't mean that you're coming by faith. Hebrews says what? Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Tears don't move God. Faith does. Tears don't make faith. Ma, ma, ma. Come on now. Uh, just because you're crying don't mean you... You you are really sorry for what you've done. Don't give me that now. Yeah, I'm going to tell you. The bottom line is, when you've done wrong, then you try to do right the next time. It's all about your actions. Not crocodile tears. Now, there's nothing wrong with tears. There's nothing wrong with emotions. I don't have no problem with that. But ultimately, you are looking for change. And that's what God's looking for. And his boldness is what moves the hand of God. Boldness, not timidity. Are y'all with me? Yes. He said, come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy. And the second thing is what? And find grace. Mm -hmm. 
Ooh, God's unmerited favor. God's willingness to work on your behalf. Mm -hmm. And find God's grace to help in time of need. Ooh, those are the power twins. Ah. <laughs> mercy and grace. I believe they wrote a song about mercy and grace. I don't know the song. I don't know. I, I don't <laughs> jump out there. It's something about his mercy and his grace. That's, it. That's got you covered. Mercy and grace cover you, boy. Front side and the back side. But you got to come boldly, not timidly. You got to come boldly. And you can come boldly when you know what the scripture has to say. You can come boldly when you're standing on the promises, amen, mm -hmm. of God's word. Yeah. Let me say this. Forgiveness. Listen first, then jot it down. Forgiveness is a choice that we make to move on with our lives. Forgiveness is a choice. It's a choice. Remember what Jesus said, this day you choose. Well, watch this now, watch this. I don't have this in my notes. It's just coming up out my spirit. Jesus said, this day you choose who you will going to serve. It's your choice. Mm -hmm. Same thing with forgiveness. It's a choice. Yeah. It's a choice. You got to believe God. The same, I'm going to say it again, the same faith that it took for you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior will be the same faith that you're going to have to believe God for your forgiveness. The oh, same yeah. faith that you receive the yeah. baptism of the Holy Spirit is going to be the same faith that you need to receive forgiveness. Yeah. The same faith that you receive your healing will be the same faith that you're going to have to receive your forgiveness from God. It's all by faith. Because yeah. oftentimes when you go to the Lord and after you've done wrong, sometimes you ain't going to feel like God forgave you. Because, see, you're sitting up waiting on a feeling. Mm -hmm. Same thing when you deal with people. You know, when people come to you, I, I, I've seen this before. When a person go and ask the other person, will you forgive me? And the other person looking like, I don't know, let me think about it. It's like, what? Let me think about that. I, I don't know. You don't look too remorseful. Oh, man. Let me think about it. Right, I'll right. get back with you when I'm ready to forgive you. Don't forget them, man. Move on with your life. That's a word for somebody right there. You need to just move on with your life. I'm not going to sit around here and wait on you to feel it. Right. Now, look, I'm going to wait on you to uh, feel mm -hmm. something from me. Look, I said I'm sorry, and it won't happen again. That's it. It's over. Well, I, I didn't like the way you said that. Well, that's your problem. You need to grow up. You are, you are immature. <laughs> right. And see, you'll take that same spirit with the Lord. Ooh, my Lord. That same attitude with the Lord. I don't quite feel like God has forgiven me yet. Let me fast another 10 days. Well, you go ahead and fast. I'll be eating hamburgers and hot dogs and ribs and all that. It's not based on your feelings. Mm -hmm. Anytime you're believing God for something, man, I wish I could stand up. I feel like preaching right now. Woo, I feel like preaching right now. When you believe in God for something, it's not based on feelings, man. Nope. Well, as soon as I feel like God's forgiven me, then I'll step out and step forward. What? What? <laughs> I need to fast a little longer. You go ahead and keep fasting. I'm eating. <laughs> I ask God to forgive me. I'm taking God at his word. That's it. I ain't got to fast 20 days. Well, oh, fast to receive forgiveness. That's not even no, scriptural. that's not scriptural. No. That's not scriptural. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Uh, uh, let me leave that thing alone. I hadn't even planned no talking about that, but that just rose up in my spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. So forgiveness is a choice. It's your choice mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that we make a move to move on with our lives. Now, turn with me to Philippians chapter 3 as we begin to wind down now. Making good time. Philippians chapter 3. And by the way, Grammy and Paul Paul are in town. Yay. Hey, everybody's starting to come in. Amen. Yay. For the church dedication. People starting to come in now, y'all. Praise Paul, God. Everybody. And, and I know they waiting on us, so, so we can go out to eat and all that this stuff. They won't cock on the walk and all the different places that we got to eat. So I know they waiting on us. Amen. Praise God. But just so y'all know, Leslie's mom and dad are in town now. Yay! We're so excited, Lord Jesus. I think it's been two years it's since mom and dad been out since that COVID mess. Amen. All right. Philippians chapter 3 
I can't wait to see him, Leslie Kane. I know she can't wait to see her yeah, mom and daddy. I told my wife, you better love your mom and daddy while they still alive. Hey. Amen. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. We see here the Apostle Paul. We talk about it's never too late to start over. If it was somebody that needed some help, it had to be Paul. Before he was Paul, he was Saul. Mm -hmm. He was changed on the road to Damascus. You remember the story? He was persecuting the church. He was there when Stephen was stoned, holding the coat, all this. I mean, he, he was jacking up the church, raising havoc. I mean, just doing all kinds of stuff. Gone crazy. But then he changed. But I like his revelation that he found right here. Verse 13, Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. Brother, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing. He said, look, if I ain't learned nothing else, I learned this one thing. And now, Paul was a very smart man. Come on now. Mm -hmm. He was a priest. I mean, Paul was smart, educated, all right? He said, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do know this. I forget them things. I forget those things which are behind, and I reach forth unto those things which are before me. Yeah. He said, if I ain't learned nothing else, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had to learn to forgive my past. Yeah. I had to learn to forgive myself. Yeah. I had to receive the mercy and the grace of the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's why Paul said, I am who I am by the grace of God. Woo! Oh. <laughs> he said, I am what I am today. I mean, the Apostle Paul, in my opinion, second greatest apostle that has ever lived, yeah. Jesus being number one. Come on. I, I put Paul number two. Come on now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. My goodness. He said, if I ain't learned nothing else, and Paul knew a lot. But he said, if I ain't got a revelation on nothing, I got a revelation on this. Yes, sir. I got to forget those things which are behind. And that's what I'm telling you today. If you ain't got a revelation on nothing concerning God, you just know this one thing. Yes, You're going to have to learn how to forget the past and move forward. That's the one revelation you better get a hold to. Learn, forget the past, and move forward. It's never too late to start over. We serve the God of a second chance and a fourth chance. He's a God that's never too late. Woo! Yeah. Man, I feel a preach coming on by right now. My God, hallelujah. Yeah. You can begin again. Glory to God. He's the God of new beginnings. <laughs> oh, yes, he is. He said, but I forget those things which are behind. I press forward. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Then a lot of times we forget verse 15. Paul talking to the church. Come on, church folk, born again folk in Philippi. He said, listen, boy, if you ain't learned nothing else, Come on, you now. learn this one thing, forget the past. You got to forget the past. Then press forward, press in, yes, yes. press forward. I love verse 15. He said, let us therefore, as many as be perfect or mature, mm -hmm. be thus minded. Mm -hmm. Woo wow, wow. And if anything be ye otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. He said, you let God reveal this to you. What? Forget those things which are behind and press forward. <laughs> he said, be thus minded. In other words, be scripture minded. Think like this. Think like what? Forget those things which are behind. Mm -hmm. He said, you need to get a revelation. And that, that's what Paul said. You need to get a revelation. God needs to reveal this to you. And the only way God's going to reveal that is you getting in the word of God you praying in the spirit, glory to God, and revelation knowledge will come. Yes. Amen. How about Isaiah 43? I'm about, I'm about done, y'all. Isaiah 43. Y'all get something out this message? Yes. Woo-wee. This is a word for somebody. That's good. This is a word for somebody. Yes, sir. Isaiah 43, verse 18. It said, remember ye. Now, oh, wait a moment. Come on. Do, do, do. Come on, I'm ready. Come on. Isaiah 43, verse 18. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider, neither consider the things of old. Notice here what the prophet Isaiah said. He said, forget the past. Remember not the former things. That's the past. Then he takes it a step further and said, 
neither consider things of old. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How do we talk today? Don't, don't even, even think, think about, about it. it. Mm -hmm. Find a neighbor right now and tell them, don't even think about don't it. Don't even think about it. Here's another way of saying it. Don't touch it in thought life. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. Don't touch it in thought life. Don't even think about it. Yeah. Don't think about it. Leave that stuff alone. Let bygones be bygones. Let the past be the past. Forget the past. Move forward. Verse 19. Behold, I will do a new thing. I believe there's a song out on that too, isn't it? Uh -huh. I'll do a new thing. Yep. Now it shall spring forth, shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Yeah. How many of you know that there ain't no rivers in the desert? Ooh, he said, but hey, my, 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 my. whatever ain't there, I'll create it for you. Ooh, that's a word for somebody. He said, even if it's not there, I'll create it. My, you may need a new heart. You may need new lungs. You may need a new whatever it else it might be, new kidneys. Whatever, a new brain. Let me tell you, God said, hey, if it ain't that, I'll create you one. He said, I'll put rivers in the desert. Ain't no rivers in the desert. In other words, I'll create whatever you need. Mm -hmm. Whatever you big and bad enough to believe for, I'm big and bad enough to give it to you. Yes, sir. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let's close with this. Luke's Gospel, chapter 15. Luke 15. Luke 15. We got to let go of the past. That's a word for somebody right there. Let go of the past. Mm -hmm. Got to let it go. You got to let it go. It's scriptures. I mean, there's a ton of scriptures on letting go to path, and yet a lot of us still hold on. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. You got to get a revelation. And the way you get a revelation is getting into the Word of God. Yeah. Saturate yourself into the Word of God. Build yourself up in this area. And then pray in the Spirit. Come on. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, it's like water in the Word. Yeah. It's like a plant. Once you plant that plant there, you put it into the soil, then you water it. Well, when you pray in the Spirit, you water in that word. <laughs> Luke 15, verse 11. We talk about it's never too late to start over. It's never too late to start over. Say with me. It's never, never too, late too late to start over. To start over. You, can begin again. you can begin again. Verse 11. And he said, a certain man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. And he divided unto him his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered together, took his journey into a far country. And there, what did he do? He wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent everything, there arose a mighty famine in the land that he began to want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him to the feeds, uh, into the, feed, uh, the fields to feed the swine. Mm -hmm. And when he had fame, when he filled his belly with the husk, the swine he did eat, no man gave up to him. And when he came to himself, underline right there, oh, no. verse 17, but when he came to himself, well, now let's back up. Here we see here this young man, you know, he said, Dad, I need everything you've promised me. Give it to me. And I want everything that belongs to me. So his father gave him everything. Then he went out there acting crazy. He missed the mark, started living a sinful life, you know, started doing what he, I'm going to do me. I got a sermon I ain't preached yet called Do Me or Do God. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's going to be a big one. On. Do me slash do God. Mm -hmm. Well, this son here, this prodigal son went out to do me. He went out to do me. He went out to do me and not to do God. You know, the Bible says in Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Mm -hmm. Then he'll add all them other things unto you. Mm -hmm. You got to do God over doing me. That's yes. a sermon for another day. Yes. But I love verse 17. He finally came to himself. Of course, he lost everything. But you know what? God is always there waiting for you. Mm -hmm. And he said, how many hired servants of my father have bread enough to spare that I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father. He had enough sense. <laughs> Come on back home. And will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And I am no more worthy. Here we go. Now he's talking about, I'm no longer worthy, like a lot of us. We come back to our Heavenly Father. You know, we shake ourselves. That's another way of saying it. he came to himself or he shook himself. Like, 
What am I doing? If you guys ever been there before, yeah. don't get too hard down on the prodigal. We have all been sure prodigals man. at sure one man. time or another. On, but man. then you have to just tap your head and shake yourself. Yeah. What is wrong with me? Right. What am I doing? I done took everything and wasted it. Mm. The Lord put all this stuff in my hands. He gave me time, talent, treasure. Mm. The Lord has done so much to me and I've messed it all up. I've wasted it. And you had to shake yourself. Shake yourself. Mm -hmm. That's right. Sometimes you got to shake yourself. Wake up, son. What are you doing? Girl, wake yourself up. Yeah. You better than that. Yeah. God loved you. Yes. Go back home to daddy. Go back home to the heavenly father. Mm -hmm. Verse 18. He went back to his father. Said to him, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And because of that, verse 19. I am no more worthy to be called your son. Make me as a hired servant. And that's how some, some of us do. I'm no longer worthy to be called the sons of God. I just want to be a servant. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see. Let's read verse 20. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion. His father saw him afar off, which means what? His father went looking for him, mm -hmm. just like the Heavenly Father. Yep. He's always looking for us. Yep. Come on now, this story captures the love of our Heavenly Father. You, you can relate this to the love of our Heavenly Father. Yep. Come on now. Back in this day, relating to this story, fathers didn't go looking for their sons, but this time... His father went looking for his son. The whole idea is for the son to come to the father. Father went looking for his boy. Same thing with the heavenly father. He said, you know, hey, you know, I didn't come for uh, those who are healed. I came for the sick. Mm -hmm. I came to seek and save that which was lost. Yeah. He came to us. He came from heaven to earth. He came to us. Yeah. Come on now. He came and found us. He was the first missionary. They traveled millions and millions of miles to get to us. Mm -hmm. He said, I didn't come to be served. No, but I came to serve others. I didn't come to be ministered to. I came to minister to others. Mm -hmm. He came looking for us. You see the story here? Yeah. And he had compassion on him. Fell on his neck and kissed him. My goodness. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against the Father, against heaven. In thy sight, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said, come on now, to his servant, bring forth the best robe. Bring and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand, shoes on his feet. Bring hither the fatty calf. Kill it, and let's eat and be merry. Yeah. Woo-wee. Wow. What lessons are we to learn from this as we close? It doesn't matter how far. We stray away. Come on now. It don't matter how far we stray away. Yeah. God always comes to us looking for us with his arms open wide. What lessons do we learn? Uh, even if we do squander the gifts that God gave us, yes, yes. God still loves us. Yes. God is always delighted to see his children come home. His unconditional love mm. is always waiting for us when we return home. Yeah. And then, you know, when you come home, that's one thing I like about the Heavenly Father. When you come home to Daddy, uh, it causes for a great celebration. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Yeah. Wash him up. Put a robe on his back. Put a ring on his finger. Yeah. Bring the fatted cat. Yes. Let's have a party. Yes. Let's boogie. Let's have a party. My son who was once lost is now found. Come home, my daughter. Daddy's been looking for you. Come home, my son. I love you with an everlasting love. Yeah. My mercy is new every morning. Yeah. Come here, boy. Let me embrace you. Let me hug you. Let me have compassion. And that's a word for some of you today. That's what the Lord's been wanting to do with you. But you got to receive forgiveness from God. Uh -huh. You got to learn to forgive yourself. Yeah. You're not a servant. Well, I ain't no son. I ain't no daughter no more. Just call me a servant. That's you. That's not God. 
God threw a party when you come home. Yeah. God loves you. Mm -hmm. And we love you too. The best is yet to come in your life. And this whole story captures the love of our Heavenly Father. Yes. His love for you and I. Woo, his mercy is That's new good. every morning. I got a word for you. Come on home. Come on home. Come home, the Father. Come on home to the Father. We'll have a big party for yeah. you. We'll put a ring on your finger. Put a robe on your back. We'll kill the fatted calf. I want to invite all those who have somewhat strayed since the pandemic. Mm -hmm. A lot of us, we've been out of church. It's time to come back to church. It's time to come on home. Daddy loves you. Mm -hmm. Don't make a difference what you have done. He's not interested in all that mess. What you've done, he's interested. He's more interested in you coming home. Ooh. Yes. Man, I feel like getting saved. I ain't gonna lie. I've been preaching. I feel like getting saved all over again. <laughs> he said, just come on home, son. I love you. I love you. He will embrace you. Not walk away from you. Not put a cross on you like, don't touch that person. That's what the body of Christ does. You know what the body of Christ does? Shoots his own wounded. When people who, you know, slipped up and done stuff and went out into the world, you don't even want them in the church no more. That's terrible. Church is a hospital. That's where you're supposed to come. We're supposed to love on people, grow them up, love them, nurture them. Yes. I love you today. Perhaps there might be someone here that don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal yes, Savior. Lord. If that's you today and you're not 100% sure about your salvation, Hey, I love to pray a prayer with you today. You know, the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised thee from the dead, he said, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse 13 says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Mm -hmm. Can I pray with you today? Repeat after me, and I'm encouraging everybody else to repeat yes, after sir. me. Yes, Say, Dear Heavenly, Father, Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you today. I come to you today. Lord, Lord I've been like the prodigal. I've been like the prodigal. I've been out there. I've been out there. I've been wasting what you've given me. I've been wasting what you gave. And Lord, I'm ready to come on home now. And Lord, I'm ready to come on home. Lord, I just heard in your word, Lord, I just heard in your that, word you said, that you said, if I confess with my mouth, with my that, mouth Jesus that Jesus is Lord, and if I believe in my heart, if I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead on the third day, you said I'll be born again. You said I'll be born again. So right now, Lord, so right now, Lord I, confess with my mouth I confess with my mouth that Jesus is right now, that Jesus is right now my Lord, my Lord Savior, Savior, and Master. And, Master. and I believe in my heart in my that heart, God raised you from the dead on the third day. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I receive you now, receive you into, now. My life. into my life. Make something wonderful. Make something wonderful out of my life. Out of my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Woo -wee. Amen. Glory to God. I trust that everybody was blessed yes. today with the word of God. Oh my goodness. Yes. It's never yes. too late yes. to start over again. It's never too late to start over. Amen. Right. I mean, he's the God of a second chance. Amen. Yes, yes. Praise God. We want to encourage you. Amen. To continue to give. Amen. Honey, if you can hand that to me. Appreciate it. We want to encourage you to give, especially this coming Sunday. Bring a special offering outside of your normal tithes and offering. Yeah. My, both my wife and I. That's what we're going to do. We're going to bring a special offering. Yes, sir. We, you know, we've been doing a lot of things, even right now as I speak. We got people out there doing something to our building, creating yes. a better place for us. Mm -hmm. Because we see it as a temple of God, not just a church. No, it's the temple of God. Mm -hmm. And we're steadily fixing up on it to get it the way we want it. Amen. So that we can reach out to the lost and dying world. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. But it's opportunity to prosper time. You know, the Bible says, Give and it shall be given unto us. Good measure, press down, shaking together and running over. So men give unto our bosom. The Bible goes on. Furthermore, to say that God loves a cheerful giver whose heart is in this giving. Malachi chapter 3 said, Bring me all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. Prove me now herewith. Here with what? Your tithes and offerings. If I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive it. Then he goes on to say, And I will rebuke the devourer 
for your sake. Amen. Now, there are several ways that we encourage you to give. Number one is through Cash App. Amen. And you can go to New Beginnings, plural, mm -hmm. CLC. Again, that's Cash App and New Beginnings, plural, CLC. Or you can give by way of PayPal at New Beginnings, plural, CLC. Amen. Or you can simply just mail it in at P.O. Box 320658. Again, P.O. Box 320658. That's Flowood, Mississippi, 39232. And we want to encourage you guys to just continue to give. And trust me, everything is going toward the kingdom of God. And we're, we're constantly building and, and, and you know, we're, we're constantly replacing things. You know, we got projects coming forth. We got to redo that gym. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's presentable, but there's still a lot of things that need to be done. And uh, we got some more things that we got to do. Uh, we got to put down some carpet. I mean, we got, we got some more painting to do and all that cost. Okay. So, you know, and we've been uh, digging into, of course, our savings and we got money for all that. Thank God we've been able to do cash and carry guys. So uh, we steadily, but we somewhat have exhausted what we had. Amen. Because, we, you know, we're fixing everything. Amen. So we encourage you guys continue to give extra. Give a little extra. Just follow the Holy Ghost. And my wife and I, we bring a special offer on Sunday. Then we're going to have a knockdown, drag out service this coming Saturday and Sunday. So bring extra. Come on, we need every every nickel counts every as we Sunday. continue to fix our building yeah. of what the Lord has blessed us. That's the temple of God. Yeah. Well, let's hold up our offering to our great high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ, and let us agree in faith. Heavenly Father, once again, we do come in the honor and the privilege to give this day. And Lord, we thank you that as we give, that you'll give back to us good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, so men give to our bosom. And Father, we thank you that we cheerfully give this day. And Lord, we just thank you for new beginnings that all our needs are met, the church needs are met, and an abundance beside. We thank you that people continue to join the church. Yeah. People continue to give, Father, yeah. that we can have more to bless other people. And we thank you for our members, Lord, that they get to claim the tithers. Oh, man, the tithers benefits. Yeah. And, Father, that is the windows of heaven shall be open. And God will pour them out, oh, far more than they can imagine. Mm -hmm. And that you will rebuke the devourer for their sake. Ministering spirits, go forth now. Cause our return to come unto us. For we believe that we receive a hundredfold return in this lifetime. Wealth and riches to be in our house. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, praise God. It's been another wonderful day. Amen. Praise God. For amen. some of you that don't know where we're located, that's at 136, or yeah, 136 Byron Parkway. 136 Byron Parkway. That's in Byron, Mississippi. Easy drive. Amen. amen. A church that is alive is worth to drive. Yep. Say that. A the church that is alive is worth to drive. drive. We invite you to come out to our dedication service yes. on Saturday and Sunday. You can't make it Saturday. Come on Sunday. But let me tell you, if you got the sick and shut in, people that need healing, mm -hmm. you don't want to miss Saturday. And then on Sunday, we're going to consummate the deal, dedicate the building. I got guest speakers coming in. We're going to have a good time. Oh, come early. Good time. Come oh, early. Good Glory good. to God. Come, let's pray before we get the party yeah, started. Yeah. Amen. Get Praise God. And uh, we look forward to being back. You know, we weren't there this past Sunday. Uh, uh, we were installing some new pastors who are under us. Yes. They're under new beginnings. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Amen. And that's Ryan Amen. and Mona there yes. in Arkansas. Amen. Yes. So, you know, we anxious to get back to church now. Mm -hmm. So we'll see you guys on Saturday and Sunday at 11 o'clock a.m. God bless you. And we love you.